Hi there, it's Rachel from All About Planners. In this video, I'm doing a review of the Panda Planner. So this video review has been highly requested by you guys. I keep getting hounded for emails each week asking when the Panda Planner review is going to go live. Here it is, finally got around to doing it. Okay, so it comes in two versions. You've got the daily version, which is what I picked, and then also the weekly version. Now, if you follow my blog, you know that I tend to only use a weekly planner. So if you're wondering why I picked the daily, it's because if you look at the layout, it's really functional and can easily be tweaked into a weekly planner layout, which I'll get to in a sec. Um, first thing, we need to check the size and also need to point out that it's non-dated. So I personally prefer non-dated planners because you can stop and start using them anytime. Um, but if you're someone that prefers an undated planner, just keep that in mind. The planner planner is undated. So it's a small portable size. It is about... 5.25 inches wide by approximately 8.25 inches high so you can easily take that with you um, on the go to school work in your handbag etc and even more so because it's super light it doesn't weigh i reckon much more than my kindle probably because of the book binding now i'm not someone that tends to go for book binding because the pages don't tend to lay flat however in this one they do i've tested it with a couple and they do lay flat without you having to hold your hand there while you're writing it's about one and a half centimeters thick, so not too bulky, and it does have an elastic band um, if you want to keep it all closed. So let's have a look inside. So first things first, it tells you, it'll give you some tips on how to use the planner, which is always handy. I like when companies include that because it gives me some ideas. Then we go into the monthly section. So first things first, absolutely love this monthly calendar layout. So functional, well thought out, maximizes the space without being cluttered. Really, really like it. So let's start at the top. You can put the month, you've got space to put the days, starts on a Sunday, and then this little box here is super clever. I wish more planners would include that, a habit tracker. So rather than rewriting the same stuff over and over again, you just put your habit and then color in the little box. Absolutely love that idea. Um, wish that it included more per day, like maybe two or three. However, if you wanted to, you could draw a line through each of these boxes and then track two habits. So color in the top for one habit, and then colour in the bottom for another one if you really wanted to create um, some extra habit tracking space. Then we have a lined sidebar. Um, keep in mind, because it is a small page size, the writing space is quite small. So, if I get my ruler out, you only get about one inch wide to write in and the lines are very close together. So keep that in mind, that is a little um, going to be tight on space. It's kind of odd that it's got that line spacing, but then it's more down the bottom. Anywho, so first things first, you've got the plan section. Really love the top three, and then I love that that's carried over to the review section. So not many planners include a review section. I wish that more did because it's very handy. Um, like To me, it's, I always do a review, so I really like when it's built into the planner. All of the monthly calendars are at the front, which again, I really like. I prefer when it's all clustered. And then you've got the um, planning space in more detail at the back, like keep it separate rather than interspersed. It's just my personal preference and a happy accident that this planner does the same, um, has the same thought process as me. So well, it's nice to see. Okay, weekly planning space. So this is a really functional weekly planner. The whole thing about this planner is functional. Love it. Love the little flags. So like it's simple, but you still got a little bit of, I guess, decoration on the page. The pages always maximize the space, so there's thin margins, you know, you don't feel like there's any dead space, there's no decorative stuff on it. You can add your own color with stickers and pens, etc. And they're not going to clash with the colors of the planner. So on the whole, really like the style. So the uh, weekly planning space starts with a review of the last week. Again, wish more planners included that. And then you've got the stuff for the coming week. So you can start with your goals for each area of your life. If some of them aren't applicable to you, you can just put some white out and change it. So probably change some to like blog. And then we go down to what you're looking forward to, focusing on learning something new and a passion project. And then if you need more space to plan out that project, you've got this section over here. So a really big space to plan out four different projects. Um, for me, I'd probably go with like blog posts, videos to record, photos to take, and maybe like behind the scenes, site maintenance, that kind of thing. And then you've got the top goals for this week as well. So you get all the weekly sections at the front. Well, I guess in the middle because it goes month, week, and then day. Clustered together. And then we go into the daily section. So the daily planner is a two pages per day layout, which not many planners tend to have. So it was a happy um, 
surprised when I saw that this one has two per day. And also even more so when I looked at it and I thought, hang on a minute, I can make this into a really functional weekly planner. So at the start, you've got this morning review section. Um, I'm not someone that really does a morning review, but I might try it out and see if I like it. Um, otherwise, when I use this as a, well, convert it into a weekly planner, I'm going to go with like top three blog, top three personal. You've got an affirmation section, focus and exercise, and then a priorities section. Um, again, I really love the format of this, a nice big open-ended box. When I convert it into a weekly layout, I'm going to make it into the blog post. So I normally post five times a week. I thought this is perfect, already built into it um, with five already. Then you've got the schedule. Starts at 6 a.m. and ends at 9 p.m. You get two lines for each hour except for 9 p.m. down the bottom. Um, if you're a night hour like I am, it's probably better when it extends further. However, I know most planners don't go beyond 9 o'clock and some of them even start at 5 a.m. I don't know about you, but I am like midway through my sleep cycle at 5 a.m. So I don't really like when it starts super early. Um, if you're of a similar mind, then you can wipe these out and do what I'm going to do, which is turn it into a jumbo checklist. So I was thinking like blog to-dos or work and then maybe personal or trip planning um, in the task section over here. So if you do want to use it as a daily, you get the check, uh, checklist built in and you get two lines for each task. So if you've tried, well you probably have, I mean everyone's tried, um, the Erin Condren and vertical planners and there's just never enough room to write the task. Like it's a tiny little column that's only like one and a half inches wide. You can't write anything in there. It just takes up so much space to write one little thing. So I really like this, how it's a nice big wide column and you get two lines for each task. And if you don't need two lines, just draw another little checkbox. Um, so I really like that checklist, very functional. Note section and then an end of day review or I'll turn this into an end of week review. So very functional daily planner and could also be a really functional weekly planner as well. Okay, so the next thing that I should point out is that it's got built-in ribbon bookmarks, which is good because there is no tabs. Um, I'm not sure what the thing is with bookbound planners, but I'm yet to find one that actually includes tabs. It'd be great if they did, um, but when they don't, at least some of them like this one include the built-in ribbon markers. And as you can see, they're three different colors. So you could color code um, or go like, you know, month and then week and then this one for your day. So I do like that there's three. Super functional. So we've got all these daily planners, daily planning pages throughout. You get tons of them. And then at the very back, get excited guys, I did the pen test. So you've got the grid dot pages and these grids are quite um, widely spaced apart. About, I work in centimetres because I'm Australian. So about 0 0.8 centimetres wide, which is quite a nice size box, not too small. And the pen test. So I grabbed some of my favourite pens, which also happen to be super popular, like the Papermate. Love that pen. And the Friction, again, another one that I love. And also some dual tip ones um, that are fat, which I like to use for headings. And some highlighters and stamps. So the paper is really, like, it feels really smooth and it's so nice to write on. It feels like really good quality. Um, so I was a little disappointed when there was some ghosting, as you can see. Particularly the marker pens, which I mean, they do tend to ghost on most planners. But when I felt the paper and wrote on it, I thought it would be thick enough that it wouldn't. Uh, ghost and show through however it does a little bit um, as always my cheapy highlighter from the reject shop has ghosted and bled through and the Mambi stamps as always they tend to bleed through and the friction you can't see which is pretty good so on the whole if you use a ballpoint pen it's not going to matter because you can't really see it it's very very faint um, but yeah a little disappointed wish there wasn't as much ghosting but the paper does feel really smooth to write on so at least it kind of makes up for it in that way you get a lot of these notes pages and then at the back we have a pocket folder which is always handy and this elastic band which you can use to close the whole planner so on the whole a very functional um, simple it could be gender neutral a guy could use this planner it's not like girly or decorative um, but you could always add some color and jazz it up a bit that way do wish the cover was a bit more I guess more something it's it's a bit dull but it does make does get made up for by the functional inside pages on the whole I do like this planner and I would recommend it and I'm keen to try it out um, and convert it into a weekly planner so I'll include um, the link below to the blog post which will have pictures of the planner if you don't want to rewatch the video but you missed what a page looks like 
Um, and then also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more planner reviews. I usually post one or two um, each week. So I'll see you in the next video.